yeah, there were so many people, so many uh, highly established mm. uh, people, you know what I'm saying? And uh, it just, uh, I tried, I, I was, I actually had a tryout on Raw the night that Shane McMahon was on the Panama City. Oh, Nitro wow. That, yeah, I was there getting a try. And that, if you remember, that was 2001. That was before the internet was real big and information didn't get out. So I'm sitting in catering in Cleveland, Ohio, trying to get a job with WWF. And, and that's how I found out they were buying WCW because he was on the show like that. We all found out that day. It's not like we it was a rumor or it was, the rumor was Eric Bischoff had a yeah. company that was going to buy it. And I thought I would have an opportunity with that. So that was just like, uh, yeah. So I remember sitting there thinking, oh, my gosh, th there's 100 guys down there now that are going to be, <laughs> you know what I mean? And like you said, the invasion, so many people were not brought in for that because it was just too many people. There's just too many bodies. They didn't need that many. So the, luckily it worked out for me that yeah. TNA came about. Otherwise yeah. that might've been the end of my career in wrestling, but you know, in my twenties still TNA coming about is really kind of what continued my career uh, and, and, and kept me working and be, being established with the fans so that I could uh, even after the, the TNA run, when I went to WWE for a little while and I wasn't there long, but I, by then I was already established enough to do independent wrestling and, and be able to get quite a lot of work doing that. That's incredible that you were there the night of the Panama City. You know, the contract does say McMahon, but Shane yeah. McMahon. And there you are looking for a job thinking you're going to get one. And, you know, it's funny, you, you and I feel like Road Dog has a similar story. He doesn't work for the WWE in 2001, and he goes to Nitro to look for a job, yeah. and then there comes Shane. Here comes Bruce Pritchard, and he's like, ah, damn right. it. You know? only, only he was a much higher level star, so it's more dramatic with him. But <laughs> yeah, same story, and I'm great friends with him and his whole family, actually. Yeah. I mean, I was so tight with his dad, Bullet Bob. I used to wrestle with him in Alabama. I did a tag team match with Bullet Bob when he was 80 years old. So I just, I love that whole family and Brian's a great guy. I, I have yeah. heard that story and I'm like, man, that's the same story I got. Yes. We both went to these shows trying to get back in and it all became one. It's outstanding that there is like the same exact story on just different areas of the night. Being right. like, oh, cool. I'm going to get a job. Oh, shoot. I don't think yeah, I'm going to get yeah. a job. Um, all right. Let's, let's hope Dusty runs some spot shows in Georgia or Oklahoma or something, right? That's amazing. <laughs> he was busy, yeah. <laughs> That's so funny, though. Um, though, yeah, but you mentioned because in 2005, you did sign a, a, a deal with the WWE and you were on Heat a lot. And yeah. you were at Johnny Paris and you did a lot of work there. But why don't you think it ever was like, hey, you're coming to Raw. Hey, you're coming to SmackDown. Was there discussions? And they, 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 I, many, many people I've talked to share, oh, there was this plan. And then that plan just blew, blew up my face. Once again, uh, the, that company was so big at that point. And there, what goes on in these meetings, uh, you just, you know what I mean? You hear afterward. And I was brought in there on a developmental contract uh, because that's what was offered to me. Um, I was finishing up with TNA and my dream was always to go to the WWF E as, as a full-time talent, not what I did in the beginning with like in 1995, but to actually be a, a full-time talent and you reap the benefits of such. And uh, I was offered a developmental contract in the words of this is a good way for you to get in. This is the way most people get in unless you're an established top uh, name draw. Mm -hmm. um, so I accepted that. And I, once again, I did what they told me to do. They told me to go to the developmental uh, training center. It was like an OVW, uh, but it was in Georgia and it wasn't, it was already where I lived anyway, so I didn't have to relocate or anything like that. So I did that uh, for a few months. And, and and even by then, after a few months, my body started hurting me. I'm like, geez, guys, I've been wrestling 10, 11 years. And I've never been really injured. Now I'm starting to have neck. In it. You guys going to use me a little bit or, you know, if you're not interested, maybe I can go back to TNA. So yeah. that's kind of they started to put me on, like you said, Sunday night heat. And that was just to, you know, get you on TV, see how you look in the frame kind of thing. And, uh, every time I came back from the match, they were happy with it. And, uh, the producers would tell me, yeah, they're talking about you in the meetings. They're just not sure, but they're going to bring this guy and that guy. And once again, way more bodies than spots. And, um, 
I just didn't have a man in those meetings going, let's, let's draw some money with this guy. And that that's real. All it was to it. And, uh, once again, those 16 months as a, a WWE wrestler is not something that, uh, everybody can, uh, put on their resume. So I'm grateful for that opportunity to work for Mr. McMahon. His daughter, Stephanie was, was always very uh, pleasant to me. Um, Triple H, all of them, they're all, I didn't have any, uh, problems there as far as going to the TV tapings. Cause, cause I wasn't one of those people that walk around, Hey, when are you going to do this? Why, why am I not doing that? Yeah, I just, man, they'll let you know. And, uh, after a certain amount of time goes by, you, you kind of know it, it explains itself. And, um, mm-hmm. I was still what, 30, 31 years old. I knew my crew wasn't over. Uh, I figured I'd, if I leave, I'll probably be back there someday again. You know what I mean? And you just never know. And uh, it was a, a handshake thing. And I went back to the independence. 